you're better than this. Hi, I'm pianist and composer Adam Menes, and if what you've just heard sounds painfully familiar, then you've come to the right place. Today we're going to learn four basic triad voicings that every pop pianist should know. Now, what is a triad? A triad is simply a three-note chord, usually built on thirds from the root up. So in C, we have our C major triad, C, E, G. We're going to be focusing on a chord progression of C, G, A minor, and F. It's a super common chord progression. And we're going to learn ways to play this simple chord progression with simple triads, but that don't sound so basic. Things that don't make our ears hurt because we're just moving one shape all around. That's not a great sound. I mean, I'm sure it's appropriate in some situations, but for most situations, we need something better. What we need is better voice leading. And the very first voicing we're going to learn is called our closed triads and inversions. It's based off the same voicing that Alexis was playing in our intro, but we're going to learn how to use inversions. So what's an inversion, you might ask? Well, an inversion is when you take these same notes, C, E, G, and you put them in different order. So you can start on the E, E, G, C. Same notes, just a different order. Or on the G, G, C, E. Same thing with the G chord. G, B, D can become B, D, G. Same three notes, different order. We call these closed because they all happen within the shortest intervals possible. So we're not playing our G way up here and an E down here. It's all within an octave of each other. So every example we use today is going to have four notes. I know we're playing triads and triads have three notes, but this one extra note becomes super crucial later and I think it just helps to fill out the sound. Mostly we're gonna be playing the root note in our left hand and then the triad in our right, but we will split it up between hands depending on the situation. So our very first example is this simple chord progression, C, G, A minor, and F. Uh, and we're going to keep the root in our left hand and we're going to do triads, but we're going to use inversions to have what we call good voice leading. Now good voice leading means that we're not skipping all around like that, but we're actually trying to stay as close to the previous chord as possible. So our first C is just this root position C triad with the C in the bass, right, our four note chord. Now the closest place we can go to, uh, to get to G is G in the first inversion. Right? B, D, G. That G stays the same. Now for our A minor, we could go up or we could go down. It's about the same. It's split in hairs here. So I'm going to go down. And then for our F, instead of going down to that same shape, which you could do, you could just move one note in this triad. Right? So our first example sounds like this. For our second example, we're going to take the C major chord up in inversion, E, G, C, right? That second inversion, and we're going to keep the bass note uh, in our left hand on that C. And then again, we're going to try to do as little movement to the next chord as possible. Here's our G, our A minor, and our F. Now, you can do any kind of breaking up that you want to do with these. That's not what we're going to talk about in this video, maybe in another video. Uh, for now, I'm just giving you an example of how to voice these chords. For our third example, what if we started lower in this second inversion of C, right? With G on the bottom, C, and E on the top. Right, we're already in a better sounding territory than... Like, that's okay, but it's probably not the best way we can approach these. And the more we know, the, the more diverse kinds of sounds we can get, even when we're doing simple triads over simple chord changes. Okay, our second voicing is our open triads and inversions. So we had our closed voicings here where everything was within an octave. The open voicings are the opposite of that. We take our, our notes of the triad, C, E, G here in the C major, and we spread them out to, uh, to go beyond the octave. So C, G above that, and then the E above that. So now is when we have to kind of split things between our hands unless we can reach tenths easily, which I can kind of, but even that is a little bit of a stretch in my right hand, and most people have a bit more trouble than that. So we're gonna, we're gonna split these up between our hands. All right, so our first example, we're gonna do our C triad with the C on top, right? C and then going down E and G, and then again, 
the lowest note, we're gonna keep that root. And we're, notice we're splitting these between our hands because it's such a huge uh, distance between, I mean, I could not reach that from G to C, that's tough. But the same principles apply in that we wanna stay as tight as possible. A minor. F. I'll do this again, this is just good voice leading. How about example two, a different inversion? G on top. I'll try it as E, C, G, with the root as the lowest note. Let's do a little jump here. Right? Just because we're trying to stay close doesn't mean we can't jump around when we want to. If we're hearing it, that's cool. It's just, if that's all we know, uh, that's when it's not cool. You know, if it's intentional, it's great. So I like that little jump there, actually. I think it sounds good. All right, our third example, we're gonna go way up. Right? C, G, E, with the octave below that. That's pretty. I mean, how much better is that than And what's cool is you can start mixing and matching closed and open voicings. There's no rules about it has to be always open or always closed. It's just a way to kind of... You can do however you want, uh, mix and match. Okay, for our third voicing, we are gonna start doing something super cool. We're gonna start using neighbor notes. Now, some of these neighbor notes you might know as like suspended notes, like you can suspend the third up to a fourth or the second, add to. I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff. We're literally just talking about any note of the triad. You can move to any neighboring note that's diatonically right next to it. What does diatonically mean? It means it's part of the scale we're in. In this case, C major. All the white keys. So any note that we're, we're playing here in our C major triad, we can move uh, to a neighboring note. And it sounds great. And then because we're in the key of C, any note on the G triad, we can move to a neighboring note, and then so on and so on. Now, if we were in the key of, say, A flat, uh, we would want to use neighboring notes in the key of A flat, that A flat major scale. Right? This is just a great way to, to create some movement and to create some diversity in the sound of the triad so that it's not always the same kind of sounds all the time. Okay, here's our first example. We're gonna use the exact same voicings from voicing number one, the first example. But on each one of these chords, I've chosen one note to move to the neighboring note and then come back to the note that's in the triad. All right, here's how that sounds. All right, some of you might be saying, well, isn't that last F just an F major seven? Uh, and I say to you, yes, it is, nerd, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about how these neighbor notes relate to the triad. Uh, we'll talk about seventh chord some other time, but we're not, we're not even gonna deal with that right now. We're literally just taking any of these notes and moving them to whatever neighbor note we can and not thinking about the theory behind it just yet. Okay, so what have I done here? This first triad, I took that C and I moved it up and then I brought it back. You don't even have to bring it back. I just kind of like the sound of this. If you just want to keep it there, that's cool too. But I like moving these around. Now, you can do these with open voicings too. We don't have to do them with closed voicing. It works the exact same way. For this progression, uh, you know, same chords. I move that E up to an F and then back. For my open G, instead of D, I moved it up to E and I, I stayed there. Ah, for my A minor, instead of A on top, I started on the G right next to it, it's neighbor below, and I rocked back to it. And then for that F, 
I took that A down to its neighbor just below. Let's hear that again. I mean, now we're getting to a very beautiful place. This is when it gets really cool. I mean, there's so many rich colors that we can get just off these basic triads, just by experimenting with neighboring notes. And hey, look, I encourage you to experiment because some of these sound better than others. Some of these are gonna be more contextual. Like you wouldn't use all of these all the time because it might just be too much. Sometimes you wanna be simple. But if you need a little flavor, if you need a little color to spice things up in your, uh, in your playing when you're doing these basic triads, this can be a great tool for that. All right, example three, we're gonna not just play one neighboring note, but two neighboring notes that surround our, our uh, target note. So like here, our second chord, the G, Right? This B, I start on the neighboring note above, I go to the neighboring be note below, and then I land on that B. Uh, any of our jazz pianists here who are familiar with bebop knows that this is called an enclosure. It can be very effective. All right, let's hear example three. Okay, so what did I do here? Uh, on the C, I took the G up to the A, the neighbor above, and then back down, and then we surrounded the B. For the A minor, I took the E up to that F, gorgeous. And then for the F, I took the F here up to the G, and then back down. All right, for example four, we're gonna move two notes in the triad. This is something that you wanna use sparsely because it really does change the quality of the chord. I mean, it could be a completely different chord by the time you get done here. So let's see what we can do with our chord progression here. I mean, come on, for that same one, five, six, four chord progression, how beautiful is that? It's a little flare on that, but that's still a neighboring note. So what have I done here? I took, we've got an open voicing here, right? With the C on the bottom. I took those bottom two notes down to their, their below neighbor. And then the G, those middle voicings, just happen to be right here anyway, above, going back down to the triad. The A, I went uh, some contrary motion, right? I took the E down to G and the E up to F, and for the F, just this little, let's hear that again, super pretty. Nice. Okay, for our fourth and final voicing, we're gonna talk about slash chords. Slash chords are when we use a different note in the bass than the root. Uh, so for example, here in our basic C, we could use a G instead of the C. Any note of the triad is fair game. I mean, any note is really fair game, but for our purposes here of basic triad voicings, let's just use any note in the triad. Okay, one caveat with slash chords, if the bass note you choose happens to be the third, I recommend not putting the third in any other part of the chord. For example, if we're going to play a C with an E in the bass, I just don't think it sounds good to double these E's. So I would recommend either adding another C or another G. I just think it's stronger. Uh, and I know there's actually some theory to back this up. Uh, this is just good counterpoint, really, voice leading. So if I'm down here and I want to use an open voicing, having that double third is not as good, I think, as doubling up on preferably the root, but even uh, the fifth. Just stronger. Or you could use one of the neighbor notes, like that, going up to the uh, D from the C. Very strong chord. All right, so with all that said, let's hear how our first example of using slash chords sounds. We're going to, again, go with our basic uh, chord progression from our very first voicing. Put a, little, uh, put a little neighbor note there on the end. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so what did I do here? The first chord is just our simple closed voicing on C. 
rooted position. Uh, we have our first slash chord here, G over B. So notice I'm not going to that. I'm uh, replacing that with a G so that we don't double the third because the B is the third of G. And then our root position, A minor, and then F over A. And this is one where instead of going all the way down to the F, I used its neighbor note. Beautiful, let's hear the, that first two bars again. All right, the next two bars, I have C over G, open voicing, and then our open voicing of G, A minor over E, Woo, that's nice. And then our F, where I just used the neighbor note above the F. It's an open F voicing with that neighbor. Let's hear that whole example again. What's so cool about slash chords is now we can craft these bass lines, these bass movements, to be, instead of relying on just the root, we can do different shapes. Listen to that bass movement again. This is the first example. It's fairly melodic. Uh, here's if it was just all roots. I mean, that's cool. It's very grounded. But to have that variance between the two different sections. It just spices it up. Let's hear it again with the chords. Nice. Okay, for example two, we're gonna do the kit and caboodle here. We're gonna throw everything at this. Uh, we're gonna do our slash chords, and we're also gonna do some more uh, neighbor notes, uh, as many as we can fit in here in a tasteful way, tasteful in quotes. And you might notice that in the notation that's on the screen and in the PDF in the uh, description, that the neighbor notes I've put in orange, and the uh, bass notes that aren't the root, in other words, like the slash bass notes, are in blue. Uh, so they should be kind of easy to see. Okay, let's do our example two where we have a ton of neighbor notes and a ton of slash chords. We're gonna mix open and closed voicings. This is kind of everything we've learned so far about these basic triad voicings. So pretty. Okay, what are we doing here? We start off with a C over E. Now I can reach a 10th fairly easily, so I have this big spread here, but you can totally do it up here if you have smaller hands. Totally cool. And then I use a neighbor note for that C, right? Because we, we don't want to double the third if we can't help it. And then our open G, right, with a neighbor note from that fifth. And I've created a little pattern here. Right, little theme going on. Our A minor continues that theme, but lower. And then we take a little break here, F over C. Again, this is a neighbor note uh, to the A, and we're just gonna hang on it. There is no third in this chord, and that's totally cool. It's kind of ambiguous, right? If you think about the difference between this and this, it's a little more open sounding, and that's cool that we have that option now. Again, those first two bars. Okay, next we have C over G, and I used uh, a neighbor note here. That C dipping down. And then the G, two neighbor notes. And then this I love, A minor over E. I have a neighbor note here, uh, the G, which kind of makes it a, a A minor seven. And then I have a neighbor note down here. <laughs> And then I have the E in the bass. And this neighbor note is the neighbor of E, so it's really crunching here. It's so beautiful. 
Oh, that's so lovely. And then we end with, again, let's hear those last two bars. Come on, that's great. I mean, that's a long way from... Again, nothing wrong with the simplicity of this, especially if that's our intention, but it is nice to be able to take that to... I mean, that's just great. Uh, okay. So those are our four basic triad voicings that every pop piano should know. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you liked what you saw. And until next time, happy practicing. Thanks, Triad Voicing Guy.